in Webb, Mississippi, which is also in Tallahatchie County. Uh, what you're looking at here is the home of a family that lives here, and I guess just across the street was a gin, but I want to just say something. I've been getting a lot of response from the, the YouTube saying that people want to live like this. I just want to give you a tour to show you that no one wants to live like this. There's absolutely nothing in these small towns like this. Uh, most of the people have the same concerns and the same uh, issues before them. Public transportation, having to drive 30, 40 miles just to get to a store. There's absolutely no jobs in small areas like this. So no one chooses to live in poverty. And I really want to say to those people that is emailing me and writing me, you may be speaking about one person, but you're not the voice for those that's living in poverty, in impoverished conditions like this. So I want to show you, I want to show you that when we make statements like that, we need to be very cautious because I know as a mother and a grandmother myself, I would not want my children or my grandchildren to live in homes like this. And it's not that these mothers and fathers and grandmothers do not want the same for their children. So I'm going to give you a tour of a house that's in bad condition but families are living here. And for those of you that say that this is not real, you see this meter? This meter is really, this, this is a meter that's working on this house. Uh, and as you can see, here's the air condition of this home right here. To show you that someone is living here. And we're just going to make our way around to show uh, how they need help in repairing these homes. And this is a typical home that you can find in, in Webb, Mississippi, where people do not have money to repair their homes. This is it. Let's walk on around. Just follow me. Again, this is the back of the home. Now you may think that, again, nobody lives here. But this is somebody's home. So if we think that people choose to live in poverty, we really need to stop fooling ourselves because no one chooses to live in poverty. And we're, we're saying to the governor of Mississippi, we're saying to the leaders of Mississippi that you have to do better than what you're doing. This is totally unacceptable. This is almost like living in a third world country here in America. When you speak of those that are left behind, if we don't do anything and give them a better opportunity, they are the ones that, are, that is left behind. So again, to the, to the writers who have been writing me, saying to me, again, that uh, people choose to live in poverty, I think it's an excuse for those of you that can help out to do something. You are saying this to yourself to, be, to, to give yourself an excuse for not helping. Because I know this family don't choose to live like this. If they can do better, they would. Yes, you did find a job. How far you have to drive to go find that job? Uh, probably at least 15, maybe 30 some miles or more. Or more, if you can find a job. Yes, mm -hmm. In the wintertime, is it cold in here? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. What about summertime? With the little air conditioning we have, it gets warm, cool in one room. Uh-huh, in one room. Do you believe that people choose to live in poverty? No, man. When someone makes that, right, when people make statements like that, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't really say, but I know no one wants to live like this unless they can help it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe you too. Uh, there's other homes like this in Webs, right? Someone told me if I go across the track, I can find a lot of little homes like this, right? Elderly people living in those homes too? Uh, I can't really say. Uh -huh. Some younger. Mm -hmm. How long have you been living here? Well, I've been here seven years. Seven years. Does this ever depress you? At times. At but, times? You know, I have to look past it for the moment until I can find some work. Uh-huh. Until you can find work. And once you find work, you can move your family out of these conditions, huh? That's right. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a gin I noticed that was working that's down the street. Did any of your family members ever work at that gin? No, man. No. But I stayed around the corner. You did? Yeah, I grew up in this area. In this area? Uh-huh. Uh, has it always been like this? No. Nah, it just time passed <laughs> and, you know, everything just grew old. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. You, do you ever recall that gin working? Yeah. What was that like? Cotton for days? Cotton, yeah. You ever worked with the gin before? 
not here. Not here, but you have? Yes, ma'am. Packing cotton, uh, running the machine? Well, it was basically an oil mill. An oil mill? Yeah. With the seeds, you would take the seeds and... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I read about that. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I want to thank you for the interview and allowing us to really speak the truth about poverty. And we're going to bring this before a public hearing on um, June the 19th, which is the <laughs>